Hello everyone and welcome back to Power Electronics Lectures. Today I'm going to talk about um, the high frequency transformers and how can we employ these kind of transformers uh, within the um, isolated uh, power converters. And also we'll see what is uh, the main problem for the high frequency transformers uh, within the isolated uh, power converters and see uh, what are the limits or what are the options that we have in order to employ such transformers uh, within our converter. Let's, let's recall first uh, some of the rules that uh, we studied last time. We said if we have a transformer uh, like this, uh, if we have a current coming inside the dot, uh, so we expect that if we have uh, no current coming from the output, then the current on the output will go outside of the dot. And this is rule uh, number one within the uh, converter. So if we have current coming inside the dot, so we expect that uh, the current on the secondary coming outside of this dot. Now we said if we have two currents, the primary current coming inside the dot and the secondary current coming also inside the dot, so both fluxes here within the core will add to each other and they will move in the same direction. If we have load, for example, so this load definitely uh, will take the current. So we expect that we're giving current from the input. There is flux generated within the core. Then the secondary winding will capture this flux and convert it to a current. So the current will be coming outside of the dot. Now let's think about uh, this issue in a different way. And uh, this is the way that we think uh, when we employ uh, a switch uh, power supply or a switch mode power supply. Now uh, consider that we have a load here on the secondary, but for some reason we keep this load uh, open circuit. The secondary side has no, no current open circuit and we supply a current to the primary. So what happens at this moment? We expect that there is current uh, coming inside this coil and then there is flux generated within the core and this will be moving in this direction. But because the secondary is not connected, so this is actually is what is just a coil. It's just an inductor. So once we consider this as an inductor, we don't care much about the dot. Even though if you know that the current coming inside the dot in the primary, as long as there is no current or the secondary side is open circuit, so we'll not care much about the dot at this moment. Now uh, consider that we have this current already there and we know that we trap the current, we trap the energy inside the core and there is nowhere to go because the secondary is just an open circuit and then after that we disconnect the input side, we make it open circuit and reconnect the secondary side. So what happens at this moment? Now we don't have any current at the input neither going inside the dot or going outside the dot, nothing in the input, but we have energy already stored inside the core. So at this moment, the secondary will capture this energy. And in this case, we'll not care much about the dot because again, this secondary will act as what? Will act as a coil. And in this case, we cannot say that this is a transformer. This can be considered as what? As a coupled inductor. Well, actually, we don't care much about the name of this. Either you call it a transformer or coupled inductor. They are the same thing at the end. But the way how we store the energy, if we have energy stored inside the core, then this is a coupled inductor. If we make sure that our design is just uh, capturing the energy at the same time, while the, while the primary giving current and the secondary taking the current, so this is just simply a transformer or an ideal transformer, if you want to say that. Also, we said that uh, the total magnetic flux uh, is equal to the uh, magnetic flux density, BC, within the core times uh, the cross-sectional area for the core. And we said that uh, this B, the magnetic flux density, is directly linked to the voltage, while H, 
is directly linked to the current. The magnetic field is linked to the current. And we said that uh, there is a nice relation between the flux linkage and the total flux, which is the number of turns. We said the flux linkage is equal to the number of turns times the total magnetic flux. From previous time, we said that the voltage that is applied on the coil is equal to LDI by DT. If we remember, this is a very well-known relationship. The inductance uh, is equal to the flux linkage over the current, and we took this relationship and put it here instead of the current equation. And finally, we got that the voltage is equal to how much? The inductance times DI, which is lambda over L, over dt and finally we said that the voltage is equal to d lambda by dt simply like that so the voltage is directly linked with the flux linkage and also directly linked with the uh, magnetic flux density we also obtained the inductance for a core like this without any air gap and we said that uh, the inductance for this core is equal to mu c the permeability times the number of turns squared times the cross-sectional area of this core over the uh, length uh, around uh, this core lc and if you think about the BH curve, uh, for any material, there is maximum limit or saturation for the magnetic flux density, which is B max. And also, uh, this curve has hysteresis, which means uh, the value of the permeability for the material is changing if the curve is going up or if this curve is going down. So the, the value of the inductance is changing according to many factors. Some of the factors may be the temperature, the permeability of the material, uh, of the core. So we said this is, uh, yes, it's uh, a large value. We can obtain large inductance, but we cannot obtain uh, a stable inductance. So this inductance is changeable. Uh, the nice solution is that uh, we said that we and add an air gap here within the inductor core and this air gap uh, can obtain can change the inductance uh, to be as follows so we said l is equal to mu naught which is uh, the permeability of the free space which is very small 4 pi times 10 to the power minus 7 times the cross sectional area of this air gap which is very close to the cross-sectional area of the core times uh, number of turns squared over the length of the air gap, which is very small length. If you look, uh, if you look at this inductance, you will find that this inductance has no relation with the core itself. Although we obtained all the formula from the information coming from the uh, core and the air gap, the coil, number of turns, but at the end we found that um, this core uh, effect, when we add an air gap, has um, almost negligible effect. So this inductance, it's the value of this inductance depends on the free space permeability, mu naught, which is a constant value, and also it depends on the number of turns that we have here on the coil. Also, it depends on the uh, volume of the air gap, Ag times Lg. So nothing to do with the core itself, size of the core or the permeability of the core. All these are negligible, but they are still important to define the values for the air gap, size and volume. Now, if you think about uh, this inductance and uh, compare it with the other inductance without air gap, you will find that uh, this inductance is very small compared to the, to the inductance without air gap because simply this is multiplied by a very small value here. And also, if we try to make this inductance large, the good point here is that the value of this inductance is not changing according to the permeability of the uh, magnetic core. So think about it here. How can we increase the, uh, the inductance for this uh, coil? Here, mu naught, no way to change it, no way to increase it. So it's a bad idea to think about mu naught because it's a fixed value. Number of turns, n, so we can increase 
the number of turns so this is a good point number two we can increase the area of the air gap and this area of the air gap is defined by the area of the cross-sectional area of the core. So if we try to increase this core size, so here you will find that the cross-sectional area here will be larger, no problems. But again, so AC can be increased. So we can increase uh, the area of the, uh, the cross-sectional area of the core in order to define the cross-sectional area of the air gap. And also we can decrease the gap length. This can be decreased. So here are the three things that we can make in order to increase the, va the value of the inductance. If you look at the number of coils here, the number of turns here, you'll find that we'll not be able to increase the number of turns if we also increase the size of the core because you'll find that we don't have enough, enough space here if we add many coils uh, within the core. So here we have um, almost a fixed solution. If we try to increase N, so we have to try to decrease AC and uh, LG is almost fixed. So it's very difficult to think about it and, and to make sure that uh, we can increase the inductance significantly in this case. But if you think about it here, the flux is equal to the magnetic flux density, BC, times the cross-sectional area. And because every core has a specific or maximum flux density, so phi shouldn't exceed the B maximum at this moment. So we can say that phi must be less than B maximum times AC. And B maximum here is the saturation magnetic flux density from the BH curve. You see we have maximum value for this. And this is H, this is B. We just obtained that V is equal to D lambda by DT and lambda is uh, N times phi. So we can say that the voltage is equal to N times D phi by DT. And from this equation, we can uh, obtain the value of the uh, total magnetic flux, which is phi. You can integrate both sides. So phi is equal to uh, 1 over N integration for the voltage with respect to time and from here we know that phi must be equal must be less than the maximum flux times the cross-sectional area so we can say that this value must be less than the maximum flux density times AC and here integration of the voltage which is very important here we know the voltage on the terminal must be less than the number of turns times the maximum B magnetic flux density times the cross-sectional area. If we think about uh, this as a transformer without any uh, air gap and here on the secondary we have another coil we have current from the input and we expect that the current coming from the output and we need to capture the maximum current or the maximum power from this uh, transformer and also by this uh, equation we make sure that this core uh, will not be saturated if the voltage if the integration for the voltage is less than this value and also of this flux is less than the maximum flux density times the cross-sectional area so what should we do so let's draw the uh, the voltage on the input and if we say that the input voltage for some reason it's a square wave for example so this is the input voltage vt and here we have the uh, secondary magnetic flux will be this way something like this now again this is the integration for the voltage with respect to time must be less than the number of turns we can increase the number of turns so uh, the integration we can increase uh, the value for the voltage and also increase as we said the inductance or avoid the saturation for the core times uh, b max which comes with the material if we use such material that uh, allow us to uh, uh, to operate at higher uh, teslas so no problems so at this moment we can increase uh, the input voltage and also we we can reach higher current with higher voltage without any problems. The third part we said it's the cross-sectional area. We can increase the cross-sectional area. The B max it depends on the material. So here we have only one option, which is to decrease 
the value for the voltage. So if you think about this voltage here, when the flux is increasing, so the input voltage is positive, right, this area. So is there any way to decrease this area? Number one, we can decrease the voltage, which is not preferable. We need to increase the voltage. Number two, we can increase the frequency or decrease the time here. If we say that this is, for example, 1 over the frequency, the operating frequency, this would be how much? 1 over 2 times the frequency. So if we try to change this waveform to be much faster, be like this, for example. So by this way, we double the frequency. Once we double the frequency, what happens here is that this area, the integration for the voltage, it's divided by 2. Once this is divided by 2, we unlock the value of the maximum magnetic flux and we make sure that our core uh, will not be saturated. And this is the good news. If we increase the frequency, so we can easily transfer more power from the input to the output. And this is the good news uh, in this approach. Uh, this is everything for today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this lecture. Let me know if you have any question. I'll be happy to hear from you and I'll see you next time.